as what a day September 1st was for wrestling fans all around the world as I give you my thoughts and review of this special day as we have a little special two for one video here is talking about the big things that happened on that day as uh, first we'll talk about all in i watched it on the new japan world the actual main show kind of feel bad for the people who bought it for like 30 dollars plus when i just waited two days and watched it uh, for 999 yen <laughs> so there is that zero hour though uh, of all in was on wg in america which i did see that live that was pretty crazy seeing a non-promotion show being on a television network that was Pretty crazy. There's the opener. SCU and the Briscoes. Great opener. Uh, awesome stuff. Awesome finish. SCU gets the win. Uh, I'll say this. The production for All In is pretty incredible for a one-off indie show. Uh, in my opinion, it had a better look than the New Japan US shows in these uh, these past couple of years. Uh, you know, as, as I say that, though, like five minutes later, they do like a backstage promo with Kenny Omega and the mics, like, they used, like, house mics. They didn't use, like, actual microphones. They just, it was complete shit. You, <laughs> you couldn't hear a goddamn thing. So there's that, that indie quality I'm used to seeing. That was uh, the over-the-budget Battle Royal winner faced uh, Jay Lethal on the actual main show in a Ring of Honor world title match. Flip Gordon, uh, disguised as uh, Chico El uh, Luchador there, as uh, wins it. I was wanting, uh... Jordan Grace to win for the intergender, like, Ring of Honor world title match. Thought that'd be really uh, cool and, like, different, but, you know, I, I get it. Listen, I got a, a BTE, brother. <laughs> this is basically a BTE wrestling show. So, you figured Flip Gordon would do something on the goddamn show. And, uh, you know, that's what people paid to see, I'm assuming, was actual payoffs of the, uh, the BTE. As uh, MJF versus Matt Cross talking about the main show. Now, I had no idea this was going to be on the show, to be honest. I don't, like, I've been keeping up with the show, like, the uh, the card and whatnot, but I had no idea this show was happening. Uh, MJF was a guy, like, three years ago. I saw a promo of him for Create a Pro, which was, like, Kurt Hawkins' little wrestling school, and I uh, was very impressed with him. Just from that little early promo, and I was just like, man, he's probably going to be something, like, on the indies, and here he is, <laughs> on 10,000 Seat Arena, opening the show. Uh, is, you know, he's been a guy, also, he's been elsewhere and on indie shows as well, but uh, did not know, he, he was always Maxwell Jacob Feinstein, but now he changed his name to Threadman, so I don't, I don't know when that happens, so there's, there's that, but God bless Matt Cross, at least still fucking awesome after all these years. Pulls out a awesome Sasuke special when the match starts. But he, Matt Cross wins with a shooting star press. It's a fun little opener there. As uh, the next match, Christopher Daniels with Stephen Amell. Fucking Jerry Lynn, the ref. Hell yeah. God bless Jerry Lynn. As a weird seeing uh, Josh uh, Segura there uh, with Stephen Amell with him being like the main protagonist. Adrian Chase on the show. So that was... I would have popped huge for David Ramsey, uh, John Diggle, on the show. God, I love that fucking show. As uh, John Mayer in the front row, uh, all, all the stars are all in here. As uh, They probably picked the perfect guy to face him out in uh, Christopher Damsel, Old Man Daniels. As uh, Stephen Mayer, he, he did a couple of good spots. did a coast to coast. Uh, he basically took a bump through a table. I don't really know what he was trying to do. If he was trying to elbow Chris Daniels or do a body splash, I don't know. But it looked awesome when he just took a bump through it. Uh, Daniels hits the best moonsault ever for the win. Yeah, there was some sloppy spots. Figured as much as it. I mean, a singles match in his third ever match. You'll definitely see some flaws. In, but the crowd really didn't shit on it. So there's that. Uh, next match, fatal four-way match. As uh, we got uh, Britt Baker, Madison Rain, Chelsea Green, and Dessa Blanchard. Uh, Brett Baker using Adam Cole's uh, Ring of Honor theme. That got a pop out of me. I love that theme. As uh, out of the four, she's definitely the one I've seen the least. So I was interested to see how she did. I still have no idea on how Tessa Blanchard's not been signed by the WWE. I mean, she's everything they love. Second generation is without a doubt TV friendly appearance wise. Just don't have a fucking clue. She's awesome in the ring. I don't get it. But as the match starts, so Canadian Destroyer. Gets a two count from Chelsea Green. Nice to see the most indie move ever get done on the biggest indie show. God bless the Canadian Destroyer. Tessa Blanchard kicks out at two. Uh, crowd goes crazy. As uh, Tessa 
gets back up their feet. Hits a hammerlock DDT on Chelsea Green. Looked like Britt Baker broke it up in time, but kind of a shitty finish. The crowd and the, like the uh, commentators were just kind of like, what the fuck? But uh, such a... Uh, they, they had such a good match, too. The ladies, they fucking killed it. But, uh, you know, just a kind of shit finish. Kind of fell flat. But I think they, they met up for it, though. As Chico and uh, Fat Ass Masa <laughs> getting a, an introduction. That was awesome. Fat Ass Masa. <laughs> Bless that man. He should have his own merch by now. As, uh, the next match, NWA World Heavyweight Title Matchup. Nick Aldis, the champion, taking on Cody. As, uh, the big-time entrances. Love that. From both guys, you know, with the, uh, the entourages. And, uh, you know, we got referee Earl Hebner. Bless him. Probably the... Perfect guy can have the referee at NWA World Heavyweight Title match. Goddamn, damn, Earl Hebner. As uh, Cody does a step up dive to the floor, and Aldis hits a elbow. Just a perfect shot on the Cody there. As uh, they build up a lot, they you know have Earl Hebner throw up the X. DDP comes out to check out on to check in on Cody. Sean Navarro comes out, tells Hebner not to throw out the match. Starts shoving DDP. They get back in the ring. Uh, Sean Navarro starts yelling at Hebner, and then, uh, DDP comes in and hits a perfect diamond cutter. The man is in his 60s, and he can still nail a fucking diamond cutter. Tremendous. Tremendous shit there. As, uh, Cody is just a bloody mess at this point. I'm pretty sure he's just blatant while, uh, they were doing their thing in the ring. Brandy gets in the ring, covers Cody as, uh, she eats the uh, elbow drop off the top from Almas. Cody gets back to his feet, hits a crossroads. Aldis kicks out of it, too. That's pretty big. Not a whole lot of people have kicked out of that. As uh, Aldis goes for the old sunset flip. Cody drops down for the cover. Gets the win. Love the old school finish there. Cody's the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion. I'll say this. Great moment for the show. The right guy won. The big babyface win. As, you know, the, the show that he and the Bucks put together gets the big win as the new NWA Champion, of course. The legacy with his father and whatnot. But there's a, a bit, there is a but, uh, of course, with this. It's going to be weird to see what he does for the rest of his reign. Because if he's going to be a babyface champion, it's going to be fucking weird with his booking in New Japan and Ring of Honor where he's a heel. Uh, he's got a IWGP US title match against Juice in the US, and that's going to be uh, the crowd's. I'm assuming they're going to be in Cody's corner, which is going to suck for Juice's face credibility but a great moment though for the show it is going to be interesting soon it does post all in as far as the NWA world champion if he's going to be a baby face or heel champion it easily could be done for him to be like a heel champion and all he has to really do is have a promo and just be like yeah i put myself over at my own show <laughs> and then it'll be like instant gratification like oh, okay you know this type of thing but the uh all in all I'm sure it was a great moment, so there was no complaints from me there. Next match, Chicago Street Fight. Joe Janela versus Hangman Page. Goddamn, this match was fucking awesome. Would have been match of the night if it wasn't for this crazy-ass main event, but that was... I love this match. I was so happy to see the bad boy, Joe Janela, wrestle a, a match on pay-per-view. From getting thrown off the roof by John Zandig, the wrestling in front of 10,000 people. I hope a spring break show of his can get 10,000 people one day. God bless those uh, spring break shows. That's Hangman with a moonsaw off the top rope to the floor. Hangman Page brings in a chair into the ring, sets it up. Does a pump handle fall away slam on the chair? That probably fucking hurt. Big pop for the Cracker Barrel. They fucking got a shoot Cracker Barrel. And they fucking brought it to, uh, they, they was in the corner. And uh, they did uh, some spots off of Janelle does a step up somersault off the Cracker Barrel on the Hangman Pages in the crowd. I need more Cracker Barrel spots in wrestling in my life. As uh, Jesus Christ, burning hammer off the apron onto a ladder by Hangman Page. Jesus Christ. Just death. <laughs> Just death. As uh, God bless Penelope before. Uh, I'll always pop for a Matrix spot. I love that shit. As a uh, Sets up, uh, as, uh, Penelope before they go to the outside, and, uh, Penelope sets Hangman on the table to the outside, as, uh, Janela hits a elbow drop off the top rope to the outside through the table, as Hangman Page power bombs Janela off the ramp onto a table that did not break. Fuck, I bet that sucked. That had to suck for sure. 
Man, I, I, that obviously, I would assume the burning hammer onto the ladder would be just the worst spot to take out of that match. But man, the fucking not breaking table powerbomb off the ramp onto the floor, that probably, it's one and two. Well, that's one A and one B. As uh, the cursed boots make an appearance from uh, being the elite, as Hangman uh, super kicked Penelope forward to the outside. As uh, somehow Janelle gets back to his feet after taking both the burning hammer and getting power bombed, as uh, in super kicks Hangman Page. Hangman gets uh, the phone that murdered Joey Ryan. He looks to murder another Joey here as he wraps it around Joey Janelle's neck. Right a passage off the ladder through a table. Holy fuck. What a match. A lot of crazy shit. A lot of crazy spots. Just I've loved it. And post match, what may be. The greatest thing to happen on pay-per-view in a wrestling show. Ghost dicks appear on the stage and risen like a hard dick. Joey Ryan is back from the dead to exact his revenge on Hangman Page. And uh, what is perhaps the first ever dick flip to happen on pay-per-view as uh, the dick druids take Hangman Page to the back to the great beyond. God, I love pro wrestling. <laughs> So fucking awesome. <laughs> Ring of Honor World Title Match though up next. Flip Gordon versus Black Machismo J Lee. So what a fucking pop in the crowd when Pop and Circumstance sit. That uh the Brothers from Another Mother shirt is fucking money. God damn, what a shirt. The switch gimmick between Jay Lethal and Black Machismo is fucking great. And then Flip turning to Hogan. Again, I love for wrestling there as they just start doing Hulk Hogan spots <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'll ever top the ACH Kenny Omega PWG spot where they were doing Austin and Rock. But that was pretty good. That was some good stuff there. Lethal injection, though, from Jay Lethal gets him the win. Bully Ray does a run in, attacks everybody, hits Flip Gorn with a chain, kicks Lanny Poffo in the dick, just being a real bully. Sets up a table in the ring. Cole Cabana makes a run in, makes the save. Triple power bomb. That gets booze, though, of course, because, you know, fuck Roman Reigns. But they'll put him through a table. As, uh, yeah, good little spot there, Cole Cabana, the, uh, the hometown kid <laughs> getting the rub. As, uh, we got the, the next match. Champion versus champion. The IWGP champion versus the Impact champion. Kenny Omega versus Pentagon Jr. The only time they faced off against each other was at Bowl and the six-man tag. Now they get a singles match. Now, for those who don't know, I absolutely love Pentagon Jr. Penta L Zero. I guess he just dropped the M from that. Uh, the man is just a fucking superstar. He is one of my favorites in the wrestling world, without a doubt. He has a tremendous look. He has a presence. His promos are fucking awesome. He's a fucking awesome dude in the ring. Can do any style. Just, I, I love the man. I can't put him over enough. But he is just the fucking man. That's all I'll say here. As Pentagon starting it off here, as he hits a fear factor on the apron. Jesus Christ. Fucking murdered him. As spinning package pile driver in the middle of the ring from Omega. Pentagon somehow kicks out of that. V triggered by Omega. Goes for the one ring angel. Pentagon counters it and does his arm break gimmick. Hits the fear factor in the middle of the ring. And Penta does not hook the leg. Giving Omega enough time. Enough strength to kick out of it. V trigger from Omega. Falls up with a poison Rana. Uh, with uh, Penta kicking out of that. Another V-Trigger. Omega finally hits his one wing angel for the win. Good stuff there from both guys. Here for a non-title match. Both, uh... Would not expect there to be a lot of crazy bumps in here. It's fucking Kenny Omega taking a package pile driver on the apron. And it's a huge pop from this. Lights go out. Come back on. Jericho's in Pentagon Jr.'s gear. And attacks Kenny Omega. The IWGP Intercontinental Champion. And IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Uh, in the in the ring at the same time, as all to just put over the Jericho Cruz. <laughs> that was fucking awesome, though. I I love that because obviously you could tell right when the lights come on. It's like he's got the Jericho tattoos. It's, that's not Pentagon Junior. <laughs> as that uh, co-main event though, Marty Skrull versus Kazuchika Okada, Tiger Toy, the referee for this match. God bless him. I was hoping Okada would have like ten thousand balloons with him, but he he's got his jacket and chains again. Hell yeah. He's getting ready to beat Tanahashi for that briefcase. As Okada's red dye now, it's starting to look like orange. It looks like he has orange hair. I don't know what the hell he's doing anymore, but there's that. 
Uh, Okada hits a Rainmaker, doesn't pin him on the first attempt. Skrull tries to snap the fingers of Okada, who hits a Discus Rainmaker, follows up with just the regular Rainmaker for the win. As a New Japan fan, probably a little too much back and forth for a singles match between these two, but as an indie show, no complaints there. Good little co-main event from both those guys. And uh, the main event, and match of the night, for sure. Rey Mysterio Jr., Phoenix, and Bandito taking on Kota Ibushi and the Young Bucks. So awesome for Bandito to get a main event on a pay-per-view here. He has been on fire this year and is absolutely incredible for how young he is and how much experience he has. He does a lot of crazy shit you'll see here in this match. I'm not a fan of the Young Bucks gear, though, for the Ibushi-style gear. Thought that kind of looked like shit. I think that was just me, though. As uh, Bandito and Matt Jackson start this off, Bandito does a lot of cool shit here. Does a tope to the floor, lands on his feet. Both guys tag out. Nick Jackson, Phoenix come in. Phoenix shows off his balance on the ropes and the arm drags. Falls up with a rolling cutter. I love that. The rolling spot of cutter. I love that shit. As both guys tag out again, this time to Ibushi and Rey Mysterio Jr. The crowd goes fucking ape shit for this. Which, yeah, that was fucking crazy. I couldn't wait to see what these two could do. And they honestly didn't do a lot of crazy shit. They just uh, did a lot of missing of shit <laughs> against each other. Man, down the line, someone's got to book Ibushi Mysterio. In a singles match. As tandem dives from Ibushi and Nick Jackson. Uh, Nick did a step up twisting gimmick to the outside. And Ibushi did his golden triangle. That was awesome. Springboard moonsault from Rey Mysterio Jr. More dives from Phoenix and Bandito. Matt Jackson does a cannonball sent on off the ramp. Jesus. I don't even know where. Like I couldn't even remember where he left the ring. And he just all of a sudden he's on the ramp. Doing a fucking cannonball sent down to everyone. Magic catches the 619, goes for the Meltzer driver. Phoenix walks the top rope to kick Ibushi right in the face. That was fucking awesome. I was losing my mind. And he started a tight walk in the ropes to just to kick Ibushi right in the face. <laughs> awesome shit. Bandito does a hurricane run off the apron uh, onto Nick Jackson. Ray hits the 619 this time though, and he follows up with a frog splash. Matt Jackson kicks out. Bandito goes for the moon, does a moonsault fallaway slam off the top rope. Holy shit. Insane. Meltzer driver on the Bandito, though, as the Young Bucks and the Kota Ibushi get the win. Holy fuck, what a match. What a show. I'll say this. Uh, was it revolutionary? Yes and no. <laughs> yes, from a non-promotion show to do a sellout 10,000 seat stadium. And for a show to give guys like Joey Janela, Matt Cross, Excalibur a chance to do a pay-per-view, uh, that was awesome. All because of just YouTube vlogs. And to have a main slot of a one hour of a non-promotion wrestling show, that was awesome. That was crazy. But, and also from a standpoint of, I'm sure the majority of fans were there. They are wrestling fans. But maybe 20, maybe 30 people, hell, maybe even more, were there because of the vlogs, because of being the elite. And they're just like, fuck it, I love the show. I'm going to buy a ticket. I'm in the Midwest. I can go to Chicago. Yeah, I'll go to the show. That's awesome. You know, you're getting non-wrestling fans to go to the wrestling, becoming wrestling fans through that point. So that's awesome. But also at the same time, no. Because in a sense, it... No, because it was produced and filmed by Sinclair Broadcasting. So really, it was just a Ring of Honor event without it being a Ring of Honor event, if that makes any sense. Uh, just, it's it's still admirable for these guys to go, fuck it, we're going to have the balls to do a show and, and it be sold out in 30 minutes. That's awesome. If it's a one-shot, God bless them. They fucking... They did what everybody else thought they could not do. If they do another one. If they do All In 2, Electric Boogaloo. I'm sure that will sell out as well. Uh, in this day and age... Wrestling shows and, and wrestling fans... If it's a big high in demand show... It's probably going to get sold out. Uh, it seems like it anyways. With All In. With fucking... Uh, most of the New Japan US shows. With... The New Japan Ring of Honor Mask Square Garden show that's happening. It seems to be that's the trend. But enough about all in. That was the appetizer for this video review. 
as Neo Michi Marafuji's 20th anniversary show happened as well on this day. And this was the match I was looking forward to seeing all fucking night. Kenta returns to Pro Wrestling Noah for the first time since 2014 with signing the WWE. He might have a different name, he might have different gear, he might have a shitty little generic entrance music. But he's still fucking Kenta and he's taking on Air Michi Marafuji one more time. Sumo Hall had 6,285 fans in attendance for this. That is fucking phenomenal. Great shit there. Uh, really the only opponent that they could have had for Marafuji's 20th anniversary show. These two have been together and compared since Pro Wrestling Noah started. Since Pro Wrestling Noah started way back when in 2001. And uh, here they were the young nucleus for that promotion along with Takeshi Morishima and Taichi Shimori. I mean these guys were in the old Japan Dojo together in 98, 97. And here uh, 20 years later get a singles match, and they fucking kill it. Uh, to tell you, I mean, I was so excited for this show. During the entrances, I started getting goosebumps. I'm just fucking watching it on the computer screen in the United States. I can only imagine how it would have felt if I was there alive. That would have been fucking crazy. As, uh, right off the rip, great sequence from both men, trying to just kill each other with kicks. Uh, Kenta drop kicks Marfuji's head into a ring post. Kawada kicks from both men, and Jesus Christ, Marafuji jumps Kenta with a pile driver on the apron that just about killed him. Jesus says, Spanish fly off the top rope from Marafuji. Kenta spins around right into a back kick from Marafuji. Holy shit, that was so awesome. Kenta sold that like death, because I'm sure that was just death. Super kick from Marafuji floors Kenta. The shitting room from Marafuji gets a two count as Kenta kicks out of that. Busai Kuni from Kenta, Marafuji kicks out of that, discus lariat floors Marafuji. Diving double foot stomp from Kenta as Marafuji kicks out of that as well. Go to sleep, Marafuji kicks out. Marafuji fires back at the bus with a bicycle knee that was just fucking brutal. Absolutely murdered the poor man. Kenta with a set out power bomb. Kenta starts kicking the shit out of Marafuji. Marafuji tells him to bring it. Kenta just starts kicking him in the head. Marafuji Kicks out of another go to sleep Takashi. Takashi Segura, the GCH, the GHC heavy, the GHC heavyweight champion, at uh, during the entrance ramp. They are watching in awe, probably of this match. As he, he's had a hell of a reign too. Oh, oh Takashi Segura, there as uh, he just had a sweet ass match with Goshizaki there at the uh, last month as kicking combinations from Mara Fuji. As falls it up with the pole shift emerald flosion getting in the win from Marafuji. What a fucking war. It's like these two just picked up right where they left off there. God damn, that was awesome. Uh, it was awesome to see those two uh, again in the ring. And just to see Kenta to just realizing it's just like he's getting held back so much. <laughs> killing his body and just putting on great effort just for fucking 205 Live. You know, or he could be here and Noah in front of 6,000 people that fucking want to see him. But uh, that will do it for this two-for-one review <laughs> video there. Let's hope you all enjoyed All In and enjoyed the Marfuji Kenta matches. I'll catch you guys next time for the Destruction Show's re preview and review. Take care, everyone.